Today we are going to learn how to create a dot plot and also interpret and compare dot plots. Now a dot plot is a way of organizing or uh, representing information um, visually. So uh, we've got a couple examples. Uh, follow along with your notes if you have them. Let's begin. The data set below represents the height rounded to the nearest inch of students in Mr. Hansen's homeroom. Create a dot plot to represent this data. So this right here, 60, 56, 61, 65, 62, unfortunately the data is kind of all over the place. It's not sorted from least to greatest. So it makes it a little bit uh, more annoying to put the data on. But I've drawn a line right here and this is all the, uh, this is the height of all the students. I'm assuming it's rep uh, represented in inches. So. What we're going to do is we draw our number line first. We label it, labeled it starting at 54, 55, going all the way to 66. And uh, when we label it, we want to make sure that our lowest number includes the lowest number in our data set. So uh, you don't want your lowest number to be 60. And then it turns out that you've got the number 59 and 55 and 56, which is lower than 60. So you need to make sure that the number you start with uh, is lower or at least uh, the well, there is no number in your data set that is lower than your smallest number. Uh, and the same can be said of the biggest number on your uh, number line. So we're going to start by labeling 60. 60 right there goes right there. 56 is right there. 61 goes right here. 65 goes over here. 62 right over here. 62 again, which is interesting. All this means is that uh, Mr. Hansen has at least two students who are 62 inches. What do we do? Do we just ignore it? No. What we do is we actually put a dot right above the 62. So this indicates that, hey, two students are 62 inches. Let's continue. 55, 59, 62 again. We have a third student who's 62 inches. 64, 60 looks like it's our second student with 60. Now when I put this on the graph, I don't want to put the dot up over here or up there or you know, I want to keep it roughly even with the other second dot which is right here, so I'm going to put it right over there. 62 again. So this looks like 62 is a popular number. 58 is the first one for that. 61, second 61 inch. 62 yet again. 58 61 again. 59 We've got 56, 62, yet again, 61, and 59. So based off of that, we can already see what our uh, mode or most common number is, it's 62. All right, uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to draw this line around it. It just kind of gives you a sense of what the data looks like. So. Let's take a look. Uh, that's how you draw a dot plot. Uh, let's look at example two. The dot plot below represents the latest test scores for Mrs. Miles' first period civics class. Use the dot plot to answer the questions to the right. So it represents the latest test scores. So the lowest score you can see is some kid scored a 40. Poor kid. But you've got two kids score a perfect 100. So it looks like the scores were actually pretty good. Uh, the, most, the most common score was 85. So that would be our mode because it's our most common number. Anyhow, let's go ahead and answer the first question. Describe the shape of the dot plot. Are the dots evenly distributed or grouped up on one side? Well, we can see that the dots are more grouped up on the right side. What we would say is we would say the, the, um, the dot plot is skewed to the left. And we wrote down, look for the tail. This is the tail right here. The, this is the peak or the body, and the tail is over here. You're saying that it's skewed to the left. It's not in the middle. It's not symmetrical. It's um, you've got this nice uh, all this data right here, and then you have just one random. Sometimes we call it an outlier on the side. Describe the center of the data. Well. Let's take a look at the different measures of center. We're going to start off with mean, which is the average. That, what that means is we have to add up all these numbers. Uh, unfortunately, there's not very much room, so I'm going to write it like this. We have 40, 
plus 65, plus 70, plus 70, plus 75, plus 80, plus 80, plus 80, plus 85, plus 85, plus 85, plus 85, plus 85, plus 90, plus 90, plus 90, plus 90, plus 95, plus 95. Guess how many times we add 100? If you said two, you are correct because there are two students who scored 100. All right, so when you find the mean or the average, you take all of those numbers, all the data points, you add them up and you divide it by the number of data points there are. So let's see, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 students. So you're going to add all that up, divide by 21, and you should get 1735 divided by 21. If you divide that, you get an average score of 82.6. All right, so that is the mean. Our median is the middle number. Now, how do you find the middle number on a dot plot? Well, you kind of do it like you would on a number line. We could have used this up here, but I'm going to use just the dot plot. You cross off one at the lower end, and then cross off one at the upper end. Then the next one on the lower end, and the next one on the upper end, which is right over here. It's still 100. Next one on the lower end then upper end, lower end, upper end, lower end, upper end, lower, upper, left, right, left, right. And actually, from here, you would say the lower end, upper end, lower end, upper end. You can kind of stop there. There's no reason to cross these off because you now know that the middle is going to be right here at 85. So our median is 85. Our mode, the most commonly occurring number, is 85. It's pretty clear because it's the number that has the most dots. So we're going to write 85 right there. Our range. Our range is the difference between the highest number and the lowest number. So remember, a difference is subtraction. Our highest score is 100. Our lowest score is 40. So our difference or our range is 60. Describe the spread of the data. Are there any outliers? So an outlier is a piece of data that, um, or a data point that is seems way off compared to everybody else. Um, imagine if you had a basketball player, an NBA player, someone who's probably seven feet tall inside of your classroom right now. Um, if you asked what's the average height of the people in class, that basketball player will skew the data. Um, he would be an uh, or he would be an outlier because um, he's significantly taller than everybody else. So there is an outlier here. Most of the scores seem to occur right around here, but we have one piece of data which is a little bit out there. If you said forty, you are correct because this right here is kind of way out there. So an outlier is an outlier is a number that doesn't fit the rest of the data. So 40 is the outlier. Uh, go ahead and pause the video, write that down if you need to. And we're gonna find we're gonna get to example three now. So the data below represents the shoe size of students in the girls PE and the boys PE class. Use the dot plots to answer the questions to the right. So here you have the dot plot for girls and the dot plot for boys. You'll notice a couple things. If we compare the shapes of the dot plots, we can see that the girls seem pretty symmetrical. It peaks out around here. The boys um, a little bit less symmetrical, but there's more information over here. You can see that the girls, the smallest shoe size is five. For the boys, it's six. So uh, the girls, we say this is a pretty symmetrical peak with a peak at eight. With the boys, we say it's skewed left a little bit. Remember, this is the tail, so it's a little bit skewed left because of that boy with the uh, size six shoe. If we compare the centers of the dot plots, both have the majority of the data close to the center. So um, sometimes you'll see data where you'll have uh, a lot on one end and a lot on the other end, but not very much in the middle. Same, or uh, this one is not the case. So in these both these graphs, you see uh, most of the data in the center, toward the center. Uh, if we look at C, calculate the medians. 
So to find the median, remember, we have to um, find the middle number. You cross off the end. So let's do it for the girls first. Left, right, lowest, highest, lowest, highest, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And now we can see that this is the median over here. So the median is at 8 for the girls. For the boys, let's cross off the left and the right, left, right. One from the left, one from the right, one from the left, one from the right, one from the left, one from the right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And now we know that the uh, if we cross any more out, we're going to end up in the middle at 10. So the median for the boys is 10. So the boys have a higher median shoe size. Uh, if we calculate the ranges, remember that's the biggest number minus the smallest number, the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. So it's uh, the biggest value for the girls is 11, the lowest is 5, so it should be 11 minus 5, which is 6. And for the boys, the range is 13 minus 6, because the smallest shoe size, which is 7. So the boys actually have a greater range of shoe sizes as well. Anyhow, now you know how to uh, read a, docs, a dot plot and make one and just to interpret the information.